Um, I'm Ruth Cruikshank and I'm a reader in French and Comparative Literature and Culture and I teach across many of the courses in the Department of Languages, Literatures and Cultures at Royal Holloway. And I'm a specialist in contemporary fiction and thought, I do a bit of film and art as well and my particular interests are in food, in life in general but also the critical potential of food as it's represented in novels, as it's represented in films, as it's represented in art. So I think it's really exciting to arrive at A-Level and to be able to tackle one of the major texts of 20th century literature, which of course is Albert Camus' L'Etranger. And that might be also quite terrifying. Sometimes it's really quite scary to to encounter a novel that's so famous and that also so many people have made their mind up about before they've even read it or pretend they've read it. Um, so the ideas about what this novel might do. Um, and in those situations, I think we have to be really confident about our own status as a literary critic. So when something is really famous, we tend to think, well, obviously the, the writer got it right. Um, now, L'Etranger is a thought experiment. It's Camus' most famous thought experiment. And, you know, some critics have talked about it as embodying a theory of the absurd. Those critics shouldn't be using the word theory because Camus doesn't like the word theory because he actually believes that you can't rationalise experience and that the world will never yield up to any attempt to make, to rationalise experience or to reason with the world. The world is deaf to us and it's forever deaf to, to us, deaf to us. In fact, it's ultra deaf to us. It will not yield up any meaning. This is what Camus is trying to show in L'Etranger. And the word absurd, actually in its Latin root, it sort of does in French, sourd, uh, is deaf and the ab is an intensifier there. So this is what Camus is trying to perform in his novel. He's performing this idea that the world cannot yield up any reason or rationality or meaning to us hapless people who are constantly wandering around trying to make sense of the world. Um, that's something that Meursault doesn't do and that's his otherness. That's one of the things that makes him an outsider. That's one of the things that gives us the name of the novel. He's also an outsider geographically and ethnically in the novel, in as much that he is a pied noir, he's, a, he, he's the son of um, French uh, immigrants into Algeria um, in the novel, yet he's in a position of relative power despite being not very rich in relation to the silent, unseen um, Arab population. That, that, that who are uh, remarkably absent from the novel. So one of the things that, 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 that Camus tries to do with his novel, I say to, to perform this idea of the impossibility of making sense of the world, is to use language which is not obviously trying to make sense either. That's what he's doing in the first part of the novel. It's this pared down language and there isn't a lot of use of qualifying terms. There isn't a lot of description. Until of course we get to nature and you've got amazing descriptions of the natural world because for Camus the natural world is a value in and of itself. Um, it doesn't have any monetary value, it doesn't have any um, ideological value, it doesn't, but it isn't, it, it has a value in and of itself. And he's setting up there the idea that perhaps as part of the world, human life might have an intrinsic value of its own as well, which is brought into question by the act of killing the Arab because the sun's in his eye. Or actually, if you look carefully at the novel, because he's just had loads of wine. Um, he drinks a lot of wine. In, in L'Etranger, drinks a lot of wine. And it's quite early, they have quite an early lunch and there's a lot of wine involved. Yeah, so, so, so the descriptions of nature are absolutely extraordinary. Um, and, you know, do make us kind of pause for thought at this moment, at this time of climate catastrophe, about the world being 
a value in and of itself and the relationship between the world and the kind of values we might put on different kinds of human lives. And in the second part of the novel, I think those different kinds of human lives are brought into question. There's a sense in which Meursault um, could get off, you know, he could easily get through this trial and, 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 and not be condemned, but he doesn't play the game. His life as a white man in um, 1930s Algeria, where the, where the, where the novel is set, um, he, the value of his life is considered to be far greater than the value of the life of the man that he killed. And we see two particular institutions who, which perform that value judgment. So the judiciary, the, the lawmakers, um, and the church. And both the church and the lawmakers are doing everything they can, effectively, to value uh, Mursa's life over the life of the Arab that who has who Mursa has killed. So that's one of the dramas of the second half of the of, of, of the novel. That's not to say, and I'm as I have already mentioned, I believe that um, that even when we're dealing with a mate, with an extraordinary novel, uh, super famous novelist like uh, Albert Camus, we can be critical, um, and I think. Camus is much more interested in the white man's life than in the, uh, the nameless, silent Arab uh, who's killed. And he's also much more interested in the man's life than in the life of the convenient partner, Marie, whose body alone um, is used and described. So if we're going to be bold and as literary critics ask ourselves how Camus has done with his novel. The extent to which he's managed to get across his ideas, and they are just ideas, and we don't have to agree with his ideas, of the absurd, the idea that uh, the world will never yield up any meaning to our attempts to make sense of it. We can ask ourselves, well, to what extent does, does he achieve that? And are there any problems with the ways in which he seeks to do that? Um, and I think it's an extraordinary attempt to write a novel or to tell a story about the impossibility of telling stories to make sense. So already Camus put himself into quite a difficult position there. Um, and certainly sometimes in the second half, uh, I think language is really running away with him. Um, but also as he asks questions about the value of nature, the value of, the intrinsic value of, 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 of human life. He does fall into the, perhaps his own trap, or a trap he doesn't even realise he's falling into, of making it look that, like the white male coloniser life is more valuable than that of the Arab who's been killed, and that the man's life is more important than the woman's life.